Hello, my name is Craig and I'm a professional property manager. I started about 40 years ago. I buy old, rundown, vacant houses, fix them all up and rent them out. I do all my own renovations and repairs. We have really hard water and the sediment builds up quickly in our water heaters. None of the cleaning methods I tried seemed to have worked and the ones that did were extremely labor intensive. Then I learned about the concept of planned obsolescence and how water heaters are engineered to fail. It soon became my life's mission to develop a fast and simple cleaning method that anybody can do. In this article, I will share with you what works, what doesn't, and the reasons why. Everybody depends on hot water, and sooner or later, every water heater will fail. It doesn't matter if you're a landlord, a tenant, or a homeowner. The information I'm about to share could potentially save you a lot of heartache and money. Well, why do we clean them? How does this sediment affect me? How often do we clean them? Well, to be honest, we, like most other landlords, were guilty of doing absolutely nothing until we got a complaint from our tenants. Here are some of the sediment-related complaints. Shortage of hot water. You can't even get a full bath. On electric water heaters, excess sediment will cover up the lower heating element and cause it to burn out. Now only the top third of the tank gets hot. On gas water heaters, excessive sediment displaces the volume of water available to be heated. Here's our biggest one, no hot water at all. These elements may also short out. This is when the sediment corrodes away the outer casing of the lower element and exposes the inner filament wire to the water. Electrical energy will short out through the water to the tank. This condition may persist for an extended period of time. Eventually, the reset button on the upper thermostat or the breaker will start tripping. The upper thermostat may eventually fail and you may get a bunch of burnt wires. Another complaint is very high unexplainable electric bills. This is often accompanied by shortages of hot water and scalding hot water at times. It is also caused by a shorted out lower element corroded by the sediment. One electrical terminal on the element is always hot and has 120 volts of power going to it. It will leak power to the ground through the water continuously. This could go on for years, costing you a small fortune and you would never know it. The water will slowly but continuously heat to boiling. The reset button on the upper thermostat may pop and you may notice that water or steam comes out of the discharge tube on the pressure relief valve. This condition is potentially dangerous and needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Our solution to this problem is to clean out the sediment, trash the inferior plated copper elements, and use nothing but premium stainless steel replacement elements from Turbo Tank Cleaner. Another complaint we get is high gas bills. Sediment will accumulate on the bottom of your water heater and other heating surfaces. This will insulate the heat from the water and cause long heating times and low efficiency. So listen to your water heater. Listen for popping and rumbling noises. It's definitely trying to tell you something. Another problem we get is extremely hard water. Your water heater acts like a big water softener. It removes minerals from your water. That's what the sediment is, but your tank can only hold so much. We have found in our research, using tanks with windows and lights in them, that the water inside the tank will turn cloudy every time a large flow of hot water occurs. You see, the incoming cold water exits the end of the dip tube directly into the sediment, stirring it up, and you get a bunch of fine particles in the water. Does your hot water appear cloudier than your cold water? Are you tired of cleaning up water spots and scale? Another problem is foul odors. I've seen the inside of many water heaters and some of them are absolutely disgusting. They can be the perfect breeding grounds for bacteria. They may break down the sediment and release sulfur compounds causing rotten egg smells or other odors. We don't waste our money on pipe magnets or electronic wave treatments or stuff like that. It's just far better just to clean them out. 
The last problem we get is expensive water heater repair or replacement cost. On both electric and gas water heaters, excessive sediment will shorten the life of the tank. And nearly all electric water heaters, if not leaking, can be refurbished to function like new just by replacing the elements and cleaning out the sediment. So we always do this first before we call a plumber. Now let's talk about the actual cleaning methods. The first is flushing. To flush a water heater, just hook up a garden hose to the drain valve and open the valve. Cold water enters the top of the heater and flows to the bottom of the water heater through the dip tube. It flows out the dip tube on top of the sediment, providing some hydraulic agitation. The flowing water moves the suspended sediment particles toward the drain valve and they are supposed to exit through the hose. This method sounds good in theory and many people, including professional plumbers, do it. The fact is, it doesn't really work. No significant amount of sediment ever comes out. Watch all the YouTube videos and see for yourself. Here's the advantages though. It's very fast and easy to do, and it will clean up the sediment of some of the finer particles. Here's why flushing doesn't work for us. First off, this method is intended to be done at least twice a year. It is very important to continuously remove the flakes before they have a chance to clump together. This is just impractical for us to do. Secondly, the sediment is very heavy and hydraulic agitation alone is just not strong enough to move much of it. Third, the sediment forms on hot surfaces and then flakes off. The flakes form clumps and the buildup is very porous. The water just flows right through it without building up any pressure. The sediment acts like a colander. Smaller particles are strained out by the larger ones and only water flows out. And finally, the factory drain valves are designed to keep the sediment in. They only have a 9 16 inch hole in them for water to pass. Another cleaning method that we experimented with was uh, using vinegar and other uh, chemical cleaners. And uh, I'm sorry to say we didn't have a lot of success with this. We drain the water from the tank and you add the vinegar solution. The sediment is supposed to dissolve so it can be flushed out. And uh, the problem we had is we could never get the sediment to dissolve. Um, it's very labor intensive. You know, at first the reaction produces a lot of foam and fumes and everything and then it just kind of stops. Then we change out the vinegar and add fresh vinegar and, and it'll start up a little bit but not very intense. and. We tried this several different times over a period of several days and couldn't get the sediment in the water heater to dissolve. Then we put uh, vinegar in jars and added sediment to it. And um, even in this situation, we, uh, we couldn't get the, the sediment ever to dissolve. So our tenants, you know, they can't be left without hot water for long ex extended periods of time. And um, the use of stronger, more toxic chemicals was really not an option for us due to the liability reasons. And the types of chemicals that could dissolve sediment would also be corrosive to the tank and eat up the anode rod and perhaps damage the drain pipes. Another very promising method we tried was air injection. In this method, air is injected into the water heater through the drain valve. The air clears the valve, provides pneumatic agitation, and allows the water to flow out. It is fast and easy, and it does a good job of clearing the plugged up drain valve, but it doesn't really remove any significant amounts of sediment, and here is why. Well, we've studied and analyzed, and here's the problems. Although there is pneumatic agitation, it comes at a high cost. There is now no longer any hydraulic agitation coming out the end of the dip tube. Secondly, there is no pressurized high-flowing water to move the sediment towards the drain valve. Third, the air bubbles come straight up. This pushes the sediment away from the valve opening, creating a clear path for water to flow. The dirty water eventually clears up and people think it worked. Fourth, there is no water pressure to run the wastewater up and out of your basement with a discharge hose. All wastewater must be caught in buckets and packed out by hand. Five, you still have the colander effect of the sediment. The larger particles and clumps strain out the smaller ones. Six, 
you are still trying to clean through the restricted factory drain valves. The next method is vacuum extraction and this only works on electric water heaters. In this method the tank is completely drained and the lower heating element is removed. You attach a small bent tube to the end of a shop vacuum hose. The element opening is only one inch in diameter so the cleaning tube has to be small enough to fit through it. Next, use the shop vacuum to suck out the sediment through the tube. This, this method will work, but we do not use it for the following reasons. Number one, it is extremely labor intensive and it's just not practical for us to do. Number two, the tank must be drained and the water packed out by hand if there is no floor drain. Three, the sediment particles clump together and are larger than the tube opening, so the tube plugs up every few seconds. You have to use the tube to bust up the large chunks and flakes, and believe me, this is no fun. Four, you can't see inside the tank while you're cleaning. There is no light, and the tube completely blocks your field of view. And finally, it is very hard to reach the entire bottom of the tank. The next method is cleaning with the turbo tank cleaner. We actually invented this tool, and I'm very proud of it. Basically, you turn off the power and the water to your tank. Open the drain valve to relieve the pressure, then replace the drain valve with the turbo tank cleaner. Next, you attach a common garden hose and a drill to the tool. Turn the water back on and start spinning. There is really no need to drain the tank if you don't want to. This tool has three key components working together that make it so effective. The agitator, the auger, and the grinder. This is the agitator, made from half-inch drain cleaning cable. It is long enough to reach clear to the back of your water heater. It is stiff enough to stir up the sediment, yet soft enough not to harm your tank, dip tube, or other components. You will notice there are kinks in the cable. These create turbulence and dig into the sediment. These can be rebent to suit your needs. The most aggressive shape is perhaps the half circle. As you can see, there is no need to spin it at high RPMs. This thing is like a turbo-powered tornado in your tank. You can alternate between forward and reverse to sweep right or left. High pressurized flowing water shooting out the end of your dip tube quickly sweeps the suspended chunks of sediment to the mouth of the tool. This pressure forces the chunks up against the spinning auger. The auger busts them up, pulls them inside, and prevents plug ups. Once inside, the sediment is ground further in the grinding chamber with the water to produce a fine slurry that is discharged out through the garden hose to a remote disposal location. This method has many advantages. One, there is very little labor involved. Two, it quickly extracts massive sediment deposits. This means you can go many years between cleanings and forget about flushing. Three, there is no need to drain the tank, and four, there is very little cleanup afterwards. The method utilizes both mechanical and hydraulic agitation. It takes advantage of pressurized flowing water to move agitated sediment towards the tool. The auger eliminates the, the sediment's colander effect because the sediment is mechanically pulled into the tool. The grinding turns the sediment into a fine slurry and it can flow out through the garden hose. The wastewater is pressurized and can travel uphill and for hundreds of feet. This eliminates the need to pack water out of one's basement. The sediment can be neatly trapped in a bucket at a distant location or spread on the lawn as a fertilizer. I know there's been some concern if it would damage the tank. And I can assure you that it absolutely will not harm your tank's glass lining, anode rod, or dip tube. The spinning agitator is for stirring only, and it's harmless. It feels quite differently underwater, and there's no need to spin at high RPMs. And besides, there is no glass in your water heater. There never has been. It's actually a tough, baked-on ceramic enamel coating similar to the one on your stove. 
There are a couple of minor disadvantages. The slurry can't be disposed of in the sewer system due to its high sediment content, and the factory drain valve must be removed. Many inexperienced home handymen may lack the confidence to comfortably perform this task, especially on a full tank of water. However, we do have a simple way to mitigate this problem. We highly recommend permanently installing a turbo tank cleaner clean through full port drain valve. The turbo tank cleaner can then be inserted directly into this valve, making future cleanings even faster and easier. Another option is to remove the lower element and clean through this hole. You will need a 1 inch by 3 quarter inch pipe bushing to make the connection. We then replace the old burnout element with a new stainless steel one. This works great since the element has to come out anyway. This tool is made out of steel and polycarbonate. It is extremely tough but it can still be broken. So always spin the agitator on slow speed. Also, Metal debris can get caught here in the grinding chamber, so feel for jam ups and take the necessary precautions to prevent tool damage. Another thing is always lubricate the seal in the area under the wing nut. If there's too much friction, the shaft will turn the seal and the wing nut together until the wing nut tightens down so tight that it can break. One thing to note, there is a flat spot at the end of these threads. These threads are not chipped. This is a pre-engineered spot for the push pin or the ejector pin to push the part out of the automatic mold. Well, if you plan on using a pro, I just want to say a few words about deception and scams. The modern water heater is engineered to be a short-term disposable throwaway item, and it is not designed to be cleaned. The entire industry thrives on selling and installing as many water heaters as possible. And according to my desperate tenants, every man, woman, and child desperately depends on a limitless supply of hot water just to survive. This is the perfect storm for scamming and deception. Over 90% of all water heaters are replaced needlessly. This is a typical water heater replacement scam. The plumber charges a large service fee just to show up. Then the age and condition of the water heater is well noted. An aggressive repair cast is given with no guarantee it will last. Simple, inexpensive solutions are often ignored. Then, a very kind-hearted gesture is made. They say, due to the age of this water heater and its very short life expectancy, it wouldn't be wise to waste more money on it. It would be much better to put that money toward the cost of a new one. And I am willing to sacrifice today's service fees and put that money toward the cost of a brand new one for you, if you get it today. Another somewhat questionable method used by some companies is to offer special promotions or coupons for water heater tune-ups and cleaning. This is just sucker fishing to find gullible people. They flush, not clean, and flushing does nothing. Their real motive is to sell water heaters. That's where the real money's at. So always ask questions. How do they intend to clean your tank? What method they're going to use? How do they verify your tank is clean? And will you have to pay them if they're unsuccessful? Sediment can be the root cause of many costly and annoying problems. So avoid gimmicks and workarounds. Just clean the stuff out. There is only one practical way that we have found to clean massive sediment deposits out of your water heater. The turbo tank cleaner is a simple solution that anybody can do. If your water heater isn't leaking, most electric water heaters can be repaired just by replacing the elements and cleaning out the sediment. It also does an excellent job on gas water heaters. And don't be shy. Be sure to tell your landlord if you've got a problem, they want to help, and let them know how they can fix the problems. Be careful and always ask plenty of questions when choosing a pro. They might not be up to date on this modern, advanced cleaning solution. And please check out our website and feel free to call us, text us, or email us. We are here to help you. Put a turbo tank cleaner in your tank and keep it.